Hey guys, this is James. And this is Denny from TDB bringing you guys episode 264. That's a lot. That is a lot. What uh, are we doing today? We are doing some tea from uh, oh, wow. a guy named uh, Deepu. My apologies if I did not say that correct. Uh, and he is a poor fan, and he had this tea uh, sourced for him, and it's uh, it's a pretty famous tea. It's a Dai tea. Uh, it's one of the original Lao Van Zhang teas, or one of the very early ones at least. Um, so it's quite famous, uh, and uh, it, so Holy he offered crap. to send a sample, <laughs> it smells and so we'll try. I do oh not. It's from 2003, so it's got 15 years of age. Yeah, I don't know smells where like it's been stored. Killer. Ooh, it smells green. Okay. Really smoky. So this very well might be Kunming stored. We will find. Yeah, we'll smells... have some idea after we start drinking it. Wow. So, yeah. This will be interesting. It smells so potent. And smell it. And pungent. Smell it here. Very, very pungent there too. Hmm. Yeah, it's just it's got this just deep sandalwood incense vibe to it. It's right. really perfumey and just potent. <laughs> I'm excited. This is this smells like something that I would burn in to make a house smell good, not something that I would be drinking. So it smells like more one of a, a unique, more unique tea. Maybe some flavors that I haven't yet experienced right. yet. So so it's very famous. I've never tried anything from these series, so I think it's going to be really interesting to try this. And let's take another smell. Keep my nose hairs intact. Yeah. So I mean, it has that really strong sort of gasoline-y, yeah. like young, raw vibe. Yeah, smells like Yeah, it smells like green. Exactly. And hay and, and, yeah. But then it has this sort of like smokiness. Um, God, this just smells like an ass kicker. Yeah. <laughs> just through and through. So, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad that I ate lunch. Yeah, always fun. So, this should be a very interesting contrast to the tea from last <laughs> week, which was certainly on the mellow end. Yeah, yeah, scrumptious. This sounds very easy very, to drink. Yeah, this sounds lively and, and attention demanding. And looking at this, I would guess that this tea is probably Kunming stored. Uh, it's not growing up a super dark color. Right. And so what's what? So Kunming. Kunming is uh, one of the very important locales for Pu'er tea. Right. Uh, it's the capital of Yunnan, or a, is it the capital? I'm not sure. It's the largest city in Yunnan, uh, and of course, a, a lot of uh, they have some tea markets there. A lot of everyone's favorite vendors are uh, spend a lot of time out there. But it's also more importantly, it's used as sort of like. I don't know, one of the important locations for poor storage is known to be very, uh, to be dry. Exactly. It's a similar climate to Seattle right. in a lot of ways, um, which puts it at the extreme dry end. Uh, and so when you're noticing the liqueur and you're then doing a comparison to the age and you're seeing it not brew up as red, right. it's giving you the indication that because it's old, but it's not deep, deep red yet, odds are high this has been a dry stored tea. Right, it's definitely been dry stored. And we can tell that too from how green it smells. Really pungent. <coughs> yeah. The aroma. God. So. It smells like just scotch whiskey. In the best way. Peaty, earthy, green, smokiness. I'm excited. Right, so let's get to it. Holy crap. Alright, you will. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers. y'all. Oh my god, it's sweet. Kind of. It has a, it, I mean, okay, so, don't mean, yeah. It's, com I was not expecting any sweetness. And so to get some sweetness is, like, nice. This is strong, smoky, it's, it's, but it has a little sweetness to it. Mm. Yeah, sort of sweet barbecue smokiness. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the characteristics mm -hmm. of Banjong tea is that we could uh, expect the aftertaste of it to be sweet. So the, the initial punch of it might be really pungent and green, mm. but we would hope that the aftertaste, so that's something I'm going to be watching out for in yeah. this session. Yeah, interesting. Okay. This is, uh, it's lovely. It has a cooling uh, mouthfeel for me at least, um, surprisingly. Uh, really strong. 
very active. Mm. I wouldn't call it particularly thick or particularly juicy. It's not bitter. It's not. Uh, it's not um, astringent or mouth puckering in any way. It's a lot more drinkable than I thought it'd be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's mm. got that pungent oh, good. green, some smokiness oh, to yeah. it. Uh, but it, like, not not in a bad way though. Like that's usually you sort of smell those and you're like, oh, oh god, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. And this is a uh, wonderfully balanced. I mean, it's really delicious. Really delicious. Uh, mm. It's quite quite nice. Surprisingly, I mean, it's not light, but it's not um, it's not heavy either. Right, and that first infusion might be the lightest one we've yeah. seen in camera, so... Uh, that was much more yellow, green, and right. targeting to the orange color, is it? Yeah. Even the cha hai has some aroma. No, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Stockiness for sure. You can tell that it's going to be strong because sometimes you'll get these bags and there just won't be much smell for older teas. Right. This one had plenty. I smelled the tea through the bag. Yeah. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting nice, actually, actually. Yeah, it has a really deep earthiness, really deep smokiness, too. It doesn't smell sweet at all. Maybe just a little bit floral. Um, but my goodness, the, the taste of it is spectacular. Let's keep going. Look at the oils on there, too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's definitely getting more bitter. Or at least moving there. Right. Certainly the first thing I taste in, in this infusion is sort of that strength and that bitterness for it. Mm -hmm. It does have a sort of that sweet wood smoke barbecue thing going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the wood in it is totally different from the wood from our last tea. Right, right. So this would be more like a green, fresh wood as opposed to like old aged, right. dried wood. Um, this has much more of that sort of, yeah, I mean, yeah. goodness, was this, is this a, this is a little bit younger than our last episode, but Still 15 years old. Yeah. So this is not young. No, it, is, it tastes younger, I think, than it, it is. Yeah, and one advantage for dry storage such as this, and you'll hear Scott talk about this a lot, is that you can really taste the character, the original character of the tea in this. Uh, I'd say it's, it's definitely aged, uh, but uh, you can kind of have a pretty good guess at what this tea would have tasted yeah. like in yeah, 2003. Exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> it really is holding on to a lot of those more raw characteristic um, flavors, leaving a much more potent residual mouth. Uh, just taste my mouth, and uh, yeah, this is a, a complex, interesting, yeah, tea potent. My goodness. And I was watching out for sort of that returning sweetness. It's not super fast. My mouth still tastes quite smoky and uh, mm -hmm. sort of that barbecue. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, really, it's, it's sort of like incense, mm. just kind of like your just sort of generic incense vibe, kind of the sandalwood sort of a thing. Gosh, I cannot. There it goes. Mm. Look at that color. Wow. Potent. Definitely a bit more mouth puckering this last uh, oh, steeping, yeah. and I suspect it will get more and more. James boiled the water for this one like a freaking lunatic, so we are about to go into the center of the universe. Someone meme that, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do another one. Yeah, it sounds good. I'm going to just hang out. We're pretty, yeah, yeah. So I think suffice to say, we can skip over this real fast, but this tea would not do well. <laughs> uh, 
Just yeah, just no. Bad bad decision if you uh, do this for your mom. Maybe this would be do well at like the uh, frenemy test. Yeah. <laughs> or like the enemy test. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it'd probably do very well. Uh, it, it with like a bunch of serious tea friends. Yeah, totally. Like yeah, absolutely. I think this is a, this is an interesting um, uh, profile of flavors that isn't in a typical uh, pu'er tea. It's really lively. I find it actually surprisingly kind of cooling though, uh, even though it's giving me good energy. Maybe um, it's, so, it's so green. Yeah, I don't even know. Um, it just tastes so close to the earth and smoky and just like, I don't know, plants growing after a wildfire or something. Right. Uh, and whew, delicious. Um, right. And if you did have a tea like this and you're doing it in a session with friends, do it last. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was gonna say. So I smelled this at first, and I smelled it. and I was like, "This is, smells so strong." And then I just tried to smell it. I like couldn't even smell it because I have so much <laughs> residual flavor experience. going on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hmm. <clears throat> I think it might be returning a little bit to the sweetness. A little bit. Yeah. Interesting, actually, because I reboiled and right. So this kind of a tea, James, first off, what, what are the, the ratios that we're using for the tea to water? We're using six grams for 100 milliliters, so the ratio is actually a little bit less than yeah. the previous tea. Yeah. Uh, this teapot, uh, as you guys might know, pours faster than the last tea. That's important, I think, for a tea like this, because if this got clogged, or if this started to pour really slow, this powerful brew becomes unpalatable. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah, I think this this is this one of those teas to give a little bit more attention to. Maybe not something you can just kind of, uh, yeah. Um, but mm, it's good. And um, James, um, would this be something that you would be? Would there be a time of year you'd be drinking this? Would this be something you'd be drinking regularly? How would you kind of categorize this? this so, thing? assuming that I had unlimited funds or whatever. Yeah, exactly. and, uh, uh, not regularly. Definitely, yeah. Definitely not regularly. Uh, it's... If I did have this tea, it would probably be... We haven't touched on this for the very long term. Uh, just because it's so strong. Uh, and yeah. maybe it's sort of a tea uh, <clears throat> that you bring out for... I have... Like, some of the friends I drink tea with really do like powerful, powerful tea. Mm -hmm. Maybe a tea you bring out for such an occasion. For sure. For me, I this tea would not be one I would turn to regularly. Um, just because it is so strong. It's not at all because it's a bad tea or anything like that. It has oh, no. characteristics in like its potency. I mean, this has to be like... Like, we bring on 100 teas, this would probably be the most potent of them. Yeah. Literally. So. And it's old. So just uh, to James's point about storing this for a while and hanging on to it, right. this tea will continue to improve and change yeah. and and, uh, and do better and better with age. So. Right. No, it's no surprise that this is a, a tea that's a pretty expensive to purchase. Uh, probably not your intro tea to no. raw pu'er. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think it goes without question that probably this tea is really high asking price. It's probably highly associated with its strength and the fact that people are collecting this tea probably not to drink so right. much as to, to, well, maybe they'll drink it now and then, but so much as to age and just because it's fairly rare. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine what this tea tastes like when it was first pressed. Probably kind of like this, but stronger. <laughs> yeah. And less the ass uh, kicker. Probably even smokier. So I, so I wonder. So I think the Koenig storage could it could be to its benefit because it does age the tea more slowly too. Do you think right. that influences the price point at all? Uh, probably. Uh, generally speaking, those those uh, drier storages uh, can. Uh, like if this was like stored the same way that our last tea would, mm -hmm. I think this version that we're drinking right now would sell for considerably more. Right. Um, 
But uh, that being said, I think I would prefer to drink now mm -hmm. the, the the one that has storage more similar to that. Yeah. A really interesting taste comparison yeah. to taste this tea and I think it would be storages, but. pretty noticeable. I mean, given how intense this tea is, I think that if this were um, hit with a lot more moisture and a more humid climate uh, to hang out for another five years, and then we taste test of them, they'd be uh, they'd have drifted apart a fair amount. Right, totally different, night and day. Mm. Um, and how are you finding the energy of this tea? It's quite, uh, yeah, quite good. Uh, yeah, it's like has a new tropic effect. Sometimes, sometimes I have teas and they're like, I, I just feel kind of like jittery almost. It's just like too much. I have just like a very focused going so on right now. Not jittery, but strong. Yeah. And if we kept going, would it be jittery? Probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we're not going to get to all of this tea, guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. This yeah. is a strong tea. I think it's going to brew for a while. I was going to say, uh, I, I don't think I could, I don't think my stomach could handle how long this tea could go. Yeah. I feel like it's extremely session. energized right now. Uh, so one, if you're drinking it with one or two people, take it very slow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it just has, yeah, just such an, uh, a strong, sweet wood uh, smell to it. And then, of course, all of the smokiness and peatiness of it and those whiskey vibes. Mm. Yeah. Really, really delightful. There are some moms out there who would like this. I think my mom would love this tea. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah she I mean, loves those peaty whiskey. Um, she loves, like, those smoky flavors, too. Okay. So, so not mom, but Denny's mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your mom would like stuff like lap songs. She, it's one of her favorite teas. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's keep going. Yeah. Are we gonna call this one the last one? Uh, we could do this or one more. Let's do one more for okay. this. Just I, to would, I didn't want to kill, kill you. So yeah. Um, gets good. Yeah. And so, who do you think this hmm. tea would be good for? Uh, since you think it would be good for maybe your mom. I think for folks who have like kind of been exposed to more than just um, a couple of pu'ers. Uh, I mean, so if this tea were just non-priced or whatever, that then play into the picture, the equation at all, excuse me, I think that this tea would be uh, great for someone who's experienced a lot of pu'ers and wants to sort of try something different and new and get into some different flavor profiles, and James left that for... I know, I, 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 oh, I, I just had a whole... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we're you know going in. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna water it down. Okay. Stack one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. I was like, oh, no, we're not. Oh, it's from 1993. Turn it up. Oh God. Um. So anyway, uh, yeah. Wow. Look at that color. Even then, crazy. It's gonna be intense. The tea, though, is uh, it's yeah. It's I think this is like a you and your your teen nerd friend kind of a tea. I mean, really. Uh, and so we're so lucky that we have so many of those teas that people send us. Um, if you do dudes and uh, dudettes and whatever so want to get in touch uh, about that, email us tdborg at gmail .com to get in touch about sending us stuff. Send us stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send us stuff, and if we like it, we might bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we do try hard to represent a lot of the tea that we get um, on the show in yeah. some variety or another. And uh, yeah, this is a treat though. Wow. It really is. So thank you so much to Deep Poop. Uh, I almost get some fruity notes in this one. It's, it's surprisingly, it's yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's changing a lot. And I feel like the it's getting a little bit less of those like really uh, earth, like gasoline. Bull, yeah, 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 like earthy petroleum sort of flavors are starting dying off a little bit. I mean, they're still there in spades, but it's just not as strong. It's opening up a little bit more for some of those higher notes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, this is also interesting in some sense, because a lot of people complain that factory teas and stuff like that have gotten a lot weaker in some ways, and how uh, the processing used to be much more geared towards long-term aging. I think uh -huh. it's safe to say that this tea would age very well in the long term. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking like 20 years, I'm talking like... 40 or right. 50 years. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, I think it's Forever so easy collection. to see how this would improve uh, with time. So, yeah. I think it's... And it's just a testament to it being delicious or to its, to its potential improvement because it's delicious now. So, right. yeah. 
Yeah, you, it's delicious now, but you have to taste through this sort of like greener, more pungent profile in order to really appreciate the tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Not as bad as I thought. It's 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 mellowing out just a yeah, little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. really glad I did that for the sixth and seventh infusion as opposed to the, the <laughs> third. third one. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> I would have puked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. Just it's just strong. It's just a strong flavor. Wow. It's like almost paralyzing my mouth a little bit. We drink some crazy yeah. shit on this show, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to you all for uh, hooking us out. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Cheers. I'm pretty sure also if you measure the mm. words per minute we're speaking, I think we've, I think, I think it's sounded like a. <laughs> 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 so mm. uh, it's strong. It's very strong. Yeah, this is delicious. Um, I really like. I think maybe the. Fourth and fifth steepings were almost too potent, right. and they were just really strong. But these ones are that are melling out are really coming to a different character of the tea. Um, right. Yeah. Quite nice. Quite. Yeah. Oof. And now paying attention to the aftertaste, as I was noting earlier, it really like right now if I pay attention to my mouth, it's like there is no bitterness that's lingering. It's mm. all sweet. It's mm. just a lot of like that sort of like. Uh, farmhousey sweetness hanging around my mouth at the top of my throat and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're so, doing it. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> Welcome to TD. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <clears throat> We're filming three more episodes today, right? Now. Um, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. It really has come back down into a, a sweeter, more um, approachable uh, tea. Like James said, this is not the tea to start your day with. This is the tea to end your day with, or yeah. rather, end your session with. <laughs> exactly. It is potent. It is flavorful. If you folks can go out there and somehow find this tea, give it a shot. Right. Um, probably not a, a cheap find, but yeah. a worthy... Uh, Opponent. <laughs> yeah, you can find a sample. I'm not. I have no idea where. It's a 2003 Dai uh, from Lao Banjong. It's uh, the cabbage bok choy, uh, as some people call it. Four stars. Uh, that's what's on this label from Deepu. Uh, so that's the info that I have on this tea. Yeah. Uh, this tea's gonna go on for a while. I might have to drink this tea tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> because that's literally. Yeah. Um, I think we're just going to keep hanging out and drinking some tea. We'll see you guys uh, next time. If people want to check us out on um, the uh, interwebs. Yeah, come check us out on tdb.org. Um, hit that subscribe button down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And a uh, <laughs> big thank you to Deepu, who I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, for providing this tea. Yeah. Uh, it's been a real treat. Uh, and we will see you guys.